Hi, my name is Vincent à la Mercerie. And together with other guys like the well-known Francesco Beretta, Mario Di Ruthe, the project leader, and people on this slide, we run the ISARC RDF project around this issue while in here. Okay? Having said that, it doesn't get us very far. So what do we really want to do? We want to answer this question, how to produce fair data when all you have is good old-fashioned structured data. This other question we ask ourselves is perhaps less common, how to add fine-grained interoperability to produce truly interoperable and reusable data. Okay then, let's take data from previous projects that, that we all have, like CSV files, not really reusable and not easily interoperable. As a first step, let's structure and align this data using standard reference models such as the CDOC CRM. But CDOC CRM is not sufficient for all domains. We need to create an application profile which reproduces the envisaged model as a consistent set of classes and properties from different published namespaces. Anatomy is the application to do it. For strong interoperability, it's essential to be able to align concepts from theory and control vocabularies using an application like OpenTheso. To add a layer of understanding, we are in the process of interlinking top terms from OpenTheso to classes in Anatomy. And the third pillar is to map concepts places, persons, to authority records to connect them to the semantic web. In this project, we use the French IDRF authority records, which is in turn connected to the VIAF and took it to all authority records. At the end, pour the data, model, vocabulary, interconnection to Elodie into a Sparkle endpoint, and you get fair data which fine grain interoperability and reusability. This is the Isaac EDF proof of concept. Isaac EDF is a project funded by the French National Research Agency. Thank you. See you in booth 15 for more details. Joseph Stadibacher was an Austrian politician and minister in foreign governments. In his diaries, he described any meeting and discussion, a very large amount of text that has been recently digitized. We build a graph from co-occurrences of people mentioned in the text using the parse tree of a sentence to find persons who are semantically related. The network is very large and difficult to analyze. Then we projected each multigraph to a weighted simple graph where edges have an attribute weight that measures how many links connected that couple of nodes. The networks appear to be clustered. Then we ran community detections. Communities change over time. We build another network, linking two nodes if they appear together at least once in the early communities. Running community detections on this network, we obtained only three communities that reveal quite well the political alignment of involved people. As an art history researcher, I often deal with objects in my research, and I will encounter many problems. If I found a box like this, the author is Okata Gonli. I want to get more information, so I must visit tons of websites to get enough useful information. Do we have a better solution? My friend, is a bioinformatician and his usual way of working gave me a certain inspiration. When the COVID-19 appeared in 2020, my friend did a little analysis to show me what it is, just for amusing. He just downloaded some data from the internet and made this picture. As he explained, there are three major databases in life science NCBI, EBI, DDBJ. Many scientists upload data every day, and the data is updated by themselves. The website 
comes with analysis tools, which can be used for analysis such as drawing trees. In our historical research, data are usually distributed all over the country. Each museum and each library have its own resource stock. To re-establish a data center and require all organizations to re-upload in accordance with regulations is feasible, but it requires a lot of repetitive labor for each organization, which may not be accepted or cause a huge waste.